<laughs> you guys can't see me in here at all. I gotta get over here and eat my life. What up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I told you guys I needed to do some research on what exactly it is that I want to do as far as running my fuel pressure regulator. And uh, the two options that I was trying to decide between were completely wrong. So I've learned some things. Let's go over it. What up guys, welcome back to the channel, man. So today, I, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you right off the bat, I don't have a whole lot going on, dude. But today, I wanna talk a little bit about the fuel pressure regulator and routing of it, uh, and what it is that we kind of spoke about in the last video working on the Blazer that I was a little confused about and I needed to do some research. The biggest thing was I couldn't decide what orientation I wanted to do. So I was kind of leaning towards this because it would make it a little bit easier to make the fuel lines and everything organized inside of the engine bay but this way i believe is what made more sense and this is what most people do so to explain this right here if you don't know what it is that you're looking at uh these are representing the fuel rails on both setups this right here is my fuel pressure regulator on both setups so this is our fuel coming in the fuel comes in, it goes into the fuel rail, and then it comes out of a fuel rail, jumps over, goes into the other fuel rail. Out of that fuel rail, it'll go through the pressure regulator. The pressure regulator will then send what is left to the return line and go back to the fuel cell. Now, this way is basically doing the same thing, it's just the routing is different. This way your feed comes and goes directly into the fuel pressure regulator. And then the fuel pressure regulator will bleed off anything that is above uh, the, the fuel pressure that you have set. And it will send the return back from here. And then from there your feed continues out of the pressure regulator, goes into one of the fuel rails, jumps over, and then you actually block off one of the ports on the fuel rails. So then you kind of have a dead end right here, right? So both of these ways, ne neither one of these ways are any good. And it's kind of crazy to think because this right here is how just about everybody runs their fuel system. Look at me all acting like a professional now. <laughs> Look, I did a lot of research, okay? And what I found makes 100% sense and this is the way that we are going to be doing it now on the blazer So uh, if you were to run it in this orientation, you could run into the problem of Cavitating air you can get air bubbles inside of your fuel system over here and cause a, a lean condition Okay, not to mention these fuel injectors if you were to have a fuel pressure issue These four fuel injectors are going to see a higher fuel pressure than what these four injectors will see now moving over to this system You don't have to worry about the air cavitation, but you still have to worry about potential lean issues that you can't really see so uh, if you were running a single wideband sensor even though we have two exhaust manifolds i only have one single wideband sensor so that wideband gets a reading off of all eight cylinders as a whole but who knows maybe four cylinders are running super rich and four cylinders are running super lean. You wouldn't really know because you only have one wideband sensor. That, that's kind of a downfall. But uh, running this set, this setup right here, you have all the max fuel pressure coming through your feed, which these four injectors could be potentially, these four cylinders could potentially be getting a better fuel pressure than what these ones are if you had some kind of problem. So let's say, let's say these four were running rich, these four were running lean, but your AFR looks amazing because they're kind of, it's getting a reading of both banks just kind of together. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that is the issue with running your system in this configuration right here, especially if you're going to be running a turbo or nitrous, things like that. Now, as far as factory, if you just have a stock LS, because this is how they set it up from the factory. But for what we're wanting to do with the Blazer, we are going to be doing a completely different setup. So this is the configuration I'm wanting to run on the Blazer. This will be our feed coming in, and then it goes into a Y fitting, in which I do not have 
I have ordered it. Now we have to wait for it to come in uh, from Evil Energy. So it should get here pretty quick, but I, I just I don't have it right now. So from the Y, it'll split off and it'll go into each fuel rail. And doing this means that no matter what your PSI is right here, it is getting split and it is going to both fuel rails. So at this point, your fuel comes in, it Ys off, it goes into each fuel rail, and you have consistent fuel pressure from each bank. It's not going to differ because one isn't getting fuel before the other. They are getting the fuel at the same exact time. And from there, they come out of the fuel rail and then they go into the pressure regulator. And doing this, we will end up utilizing both ends of the pressure regulator. That's the reason why I have both my Dash 8 fittings on there. And then on the bottom of it, we have our return. So basically, this would be sitting like this. And then the return will just shoot straight down the center and then go back to the back. And then no matter what, even if you do end up having an issue, at least all eight cylinders are going to be getting the same fuel pressure. So in theory, you should be able to see that as a collective whole in your uh, AFR gauge, you know what I'm saying? So your air fuel ratio should be impacted. So for the most part, if you were having a fuel issue and you were put into a situation where you're getting lean, at least it will be the entire engine and you should be able to see that on in your air fuel ratio, you know, rather than maybe four of them get four of them normal and four of them being lean or four being rich four being lean and it's showing you a combined uh ratio of both banks even though they are getting different fuel pressures so this is just a a safer way to do it to be more reliable with what uh, each bank is getting as far as fuel pressure but like i said at this moment right now i don't have everything to uh set it up like this i am waiting for my y to come in and then i also have some of those tight radius uh 90 degree connector 90 degree fittings coming in that's definitely going to help us <laughs> with doing all of this man so my next problem that i'm running into is where to exactly mount this because the way that i have my picture drawn out here with my fuel pressure regulator mounted right in the center uh, this would work with the Holly High Ram, but it's not going to work with the truck manifold. I've been out here just kind of staring at it and trying to figure out exactly where it is I can mount this thing. And honestly, dude, there's there's really nowhere that I'm going to be able to mount it to where it's going to be centered, like centralized with the fuel system. Unless I was to mount it like up here somewhere, which I'm not going to do. So uh, I'm leaning towards making some kind of bracket to mount it over here and once again dude how everything just seems to want to be on this side of the freaking engine um i was thinking about to combat that i would mount it on this side since this side is so bare but the problem with mounting it on this side is eventually i'm going to take this fuel pressure gauge off of there whenever my pressure sensor comes in because I can unscrew that right there and then screw my fuel pressure sensor in in which it's going to have to plug in and this is the plug for it. Of course, it's on this side of the harness. So if it was mounted right here, I'd be able to plug it right in. If it was mounted over there, I would not be able to plug it right in, dude. So I'm just cursed to have absolutely everything running on this side of the freaking engine, dude. Uh, for all my LS swap guys, are, do you have the same issue? maybe maybe you do and maybe it just doesn't drive you as crazy as it drives me uh, but at the same time my mind is kind of thinking that whenever we do turbo the blazer at least all my wiring all my fuel lines the majority of the things that you want to keep away from heat right is all going to be on this side because basically the turbo is going to live right here so uh for the turbo being here, I, I guess it's just better for everything to be on the other side. Anyhow, like I said, guys, I'm waiting for parts. So, unfortunately, I'm not really doing a whole lot today. I know I have a thousand other things to do, but I'm, I'm trying this whole, you know, trying to have a day of relaxation for myself. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, 
Throw it in the comments down below what it is you guys think. Any uh, more recommendations or if you think that that is probably the best route. From my research, I feel like this is going to be the best setup right here to run. So anyhow, have an amazing weekend, guys. We will be seeing you guys tomorrow for the Saturday vlog. Um, and this week is going to start our Sundays off. So we're not going to be posting this Sunday. So we'll have the Saturday vlog and then we'll be right back at you with another one on Monday, man. Like I said, have a good weekend. Later.